Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. I bet you need a website. So you know what? Make it with Squarespace. We've made ornaments that look just like iced cookies. And now I think it's time for us to go 3D. Last year, I bought these teeny tiny gingerbread house cookie cutters and I've yet to use them. I've been so obsessed with making cookie ornaments lately and I was laying awake in bed one day and thought, let's make a clay house. And I was super obsessed with the idea. First things first, let's munch, munch up our clay. Let's make it warm by kneading it between our hands and then we could roll it out nice and flat, just like you're making a cookie. Exact same thing, except uh, you can't eat it, of course. Course. Personally, I use two wooden skewers. That is the exact height that I like to make my clay cookies. So we roll out our dough, I mean our clay, and then use the cookie cutters to cut out our pieces just like we would with gingerbread, except we're using clay. Have I mentioned that we're using clay instead of gingerbread yet? So at this point, you might be wondering how I make my clay look like cookies. Well, I burn it and I would not recommend it because they do sort of, you know, put off dangerous dangerous, toxic fumes. I like to dye for my art, what can I say? I have dabbled with using a brown clay, but it just doesn't create this sort of marbly, gradient, crusty texture that looks just like a cookie. It just sort of looks like brown clay with no texture and it's boring and I hated it. So to put our pieces together, instead of using icing, obviously, I'm going to be using a hot glue gun. Now I haven't used a hot glue gun for art projects in many, many years. So I'm not super comfortable with using a hot glue gun. I just have one basic hot glue gun for crafts and things if I need it. So I use the hot glue gun as I would using icing to decorate the houses. I used it to drip. I used it to fuse the pieces together. Is this the best way to put clay together? I have no idea. I guess we'll find out if they fall apart. And if you're wondering why I didn't use white tinted hot glue, it's just because I felt like I was going to add these painted details to the house. The painted details were going to be a different white, a different opacity, and they weren't going to match the hot glue. I was going to end up painting white over them anyway, so I just used the glue I had. In a perfect world, I would have loved to use white glue because then I wouldn't have to paint over it, but it is what it is. Once the pieces were together, I used my heat gun to actually melt the glue even further if I wanted them to drip more. Hot tip. Oh my God, literally a hot tip. Oh God. Anyways, I'm using my acrylic gouache to paint on top of the hot glue to make it look like icing. And I would probably try using gesso on the big house in the future. The paint did have trouble sticking to the glue, but I think for a test on technique and overall just seeing what I wanna do, this was a good learning experience, obviously. Overall, I was really happy with the house I came up with. And I think the matte paint actually does look like dried icing. I think it's perfect, I love it. But I wanted to test out a few other techniques. So we are doing another small house. This time I focused on small, I guess, dripping icicle type hot glue melts. And then I thought, you know what? What would it look like if I just covered the entirety of the roof in hot glue to look like, like melted snow? Honestly, it's a little sloppy, but I think it's adorable. I absolutely love it. It looks like icing. It looks like a snow covered roof. I honestly think that making it look sloppy sort of makes it look more like a gingerbread house because let's be honest, working with icing is very hard. With this house, I added a few extra details like holly berry sprinkles on the roof, some hollies all around and that house was done. For a third and final test, I thought it would be really cute to put a string in the roof and make it into an ornament. So once again, I painted on some details like windows, um, plant decorations, put some berries in those plants. And of course I had to do some more drips. So we did some more drips and just playing around with the style of the roof. I put some icing circles and then some candy on top just to add a splash of color. And that was it for this house. All three styles are different, but also so very similar and cute. I just wanted to test out some techniques. And you know what? I actually bought two other glue guns to see which was best to use. So I've got some glue guns. I've got some techniques. The little house has turned out super adorable and I'm excited to work on our big house. Before 
we get started on our big boy house, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. How long have you been telling yourself to make that website, gallery, or shop and you still haven't done it? Yeah. That's okay because with Squarespace, it's super easy. Don't know how to make a website? Squarespace has so many pre-built layouts. All you have to do is choose one, customize it, and you're done. Create a gallery for your artwork, schedule a post for your blog. It even has podcast support. Sell your products, sell your services, sell your subscriptions, even sell your digital content. Okay, artists, no more excuses. Go make that gosh darn gallery. It's super easy. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Casey Golden to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's get started on that big boy. Just like our small gingerbread house cookie cutter set, I have also not to use this cookie cutter set. We start the exact same way as we did with our small gingerbread houses, rolling out our dough and cutting out our pieces, but this time we do have quite a bit of options for customizing our house. The walls and roof of your house are huge blank pieces that you then have to cut out the door, your windows, and everything is customizable, so you get to choose where the windows go and what shape they are. I did stick pretty basic to my design because this was my first time hand making a gingerbread house. Square windows in the front, circle on the top, our door. The one thing I will say is I was not sure what they expected you to do with the framed windows. The windows that have the sort of square sections with the like plus sign in the middle. They included a plus sign cookie cutter, but that's that's not the window. <laughs> I would expect maybe them including a very small square that I can then cut out the four windows, but they included the plus sign part. So I think what they expected you to do was to use the big square, cut out your window, and then cut out a separate plus sign piece that you then replace into the square of the window. But I don't trust working with clay and rejoining pieces. I just don't trust that they're going to be as strong. So what I did was I did a very small imprint of that plus sign and then cut out the squares of the window. Is it sloppy? Absolutely, but I do like a good handmade feel, so I'm okay with that. Next up, I did wanna make some adjustments to the chimney. Their chimney goes straight right in the middle of the roof of the house, which wasn't really my vibe. I wanted it to be off center on one side of the house. So what I did was I cut the angle of the roof and then from there just cut out chimney pieces, which were pretty easy. So next up, after my pieces were baked, it was time to assemble our house, which was very easy since I had so much practice with our smaller houses. Now, when it came to the roof aligning up with the rest of the house, things weren't, you know, perfect. There were some gaps, but I felt like just filling them in with hot glue and making them look like icing was going to look just fine. So the most challenging part was definitely adding the hot glue or the icing to our gingerbread house. With the smaller gingerbread houses I made earlier, I sort of had an idea of which techniques I wanted to use, what sort of design I wanted to go with with my house. But in the end, I sort of winged it and I made some mistakes here and there, which changed a few things. At one point, the hot glue started going along the side of the house and I was like, you know what? Let's just embrace that and just make it this melted waterfall icicle situation along the side of the house, which honestly, it looks pretty cool. So then I just started pouring a bunch of hot glue on the top of the house to make it look like snow or something. I like it. Of course, it was looking a little lumpy, so I hit it with my heat gun, which smoothed it out. And oh my God, it looks just like icing or to be honest, this looks a little bit more like a glaze and I'm still not sure if I do want to go back and paint the icing, but I thought that the look of this sort of semi-transparent glaze on top of the house actually looked really interesting, fun, and different. It does look very adult and I do think that sort of influenced my decision on keeping it like this and not painting it white. Look, I find it funny that it kind of looks like an adult situation happened to this house. It's sort of part of the joke. I also just feel like it looks like glaze or icing a lot too, so I don't know. On one hand, the white would definitely pop off of the house a lot more. On the other hand, I really like the look of the hot glue. It looks, it looks pretty cool. 
Adding the drippy snow is definitely my favorite part, especially in the windows. It was so perfect and easy just adding goopy, drippy globs of glue in the windows. It looks so good, it was so easy, and I could honestly do it all day. Moving on to the chimney, we definitely got drippy there. I just squeezed a bunch of glue at the top of that chimney, and it, it just looks so good. Tell me this does not look like a gingerbread house. And you know what, I'll be honest. At one point, I glanced at the house, and for a split second, I thought about biting into it until I realized this is clay, not a cookie. So once our house was assembled, it was time to start adding details. And again, I wasn't sure what to do with the design. I was just sort of winging it the whole time. Added some drippy icing tiles on the top, some icing brick suggestions on the house. And I really liked the holly sprinkle design on one of the smaller houses. So I wanted to mimic that on our big house. And this definitely helped bring color to our house. I do like how plain it is, but it definitely needed some color. The little berries on the roof are super cute. I also went ahead and added some colored bricks here and there in the house, which I also feel like is very cute. I think my only thing that I wish I did differently is I just feel like the roof and the base of the house, they need to be different. They're very, they blend in together. Either I needed to commit to completely covering the roof in snow or I just needed to color it a completely different color. Either way, that is it for our house. I added some resin to some of the colored bits just to make them look like candy or different icing. And our clay gingerbread house display is done. about the heat of the lights melting the hot glue. So something to think about. Otherwise, this was a really fun project and I I wanna do it again. Once again, a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Go out there, make yourself a website and a huge thank you to you guys for watching. Thank you guys so, so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.